Slaves to the past that we put ourselves to In all of our trials, all of our pain Can still disappear at the sound of your name We have been wandering, waiting for you Show us your fire Show us your fire You're faithful, but still we need hope Crying for rescue to lead us all oh. Will you remember the promise you made? Desperate for mercy, we bow down and pray Faithful, but still we need hope. Show us your fire. Show us your fire. Would you show us your fire? Come to fight for 
gets out of me I'll raise a hallelujah I will wash the darkness free yeah. I'll raise a hallelujah In the middle of the mystery Well, 2020 is coming to a close. It's hard to believe that this is the actual last Sunday of 2020. I know this has felt like a very long year, but, but also it feels like, man, in a lot of ways, this year went by very quickly. And I thought that for our family Sabbath today, which by the way, thanks for joining us, I thought that I might end out the year with the same passage of scripture that we started the year with. And that's in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, starting in verse 12. Let's read that together, will we? For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and all were made to drink of one spirit. Here's what I like. For the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I don't belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I don't belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would be the sense of hearing? By the way, can you imagine if the whole body were an eye? That would be very strange. Okay, where would be the hearing? If the whole body were an ear, also strange. Where would be the sense of smell? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would be or where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet one body. Now look at this, verse 21. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And on those parts of the body that we think less honorable, we bestow the greater honor and and our unpresentable parts are treated with greater modesty, which our more presentable parts do not require. 
But God has so composed the body, giving greater honor to the part that lacked it, that there may be no division. Let me just say that one more time. No division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honored, all rejoice together. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. What an important passage for us. I can't believe that we began the year with that passage. Can you? Not only do we begin with that, the year with that passage, but, but we shared a couple words that, that I had felt like God laid on my heart for us as a church to walk through over this year. Do you remember what those words were? Two words. Number one was unity, and number two was preparation. And then we also added some phrases just to kind of bolster those words for us, pad those words. So as it pertains to unity, we said that unity as a church, that we are only as strong as we are united. And as it pertains to preparation, we said that as a church, we can't plan a move of God, but we definitely can prepare for one. Wow, I could not have predicted that those two words would be so crucial to this year. I mean, can you, could you have, who could have prepared for that? This has been the craziest year, at least in my lifetime. And we've seen more chaos, we've seen more brokenness, more confusion, more disillusionment and than in any other time, at least in my life. And how could we have prepared for that? At the beginning of the year, if you would have told me that churches would have stopped, if businesses would have been shut down, families separated for holidays and, 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 and total, uh, total restrictions given out and people were gonna be living in fear, I would have said, what are you talking about? I've never heard of that, right? How can you prepare for that? And to be honest, I don't know that you can, at least not well. And yet these are the words that God, I feel like gave us as a church, unity, and preparation. You know, I've learned a lot this year, and I've learned a lot about unity. And you know one of the things that I've learned? I found out that as a family, to be unified doesn't mean that we are gonna necessarily see eye to eye on everything. It doesn't mean that we're gonna agree on every little nuanced thing or, or every idea or thought. That's not what unity means. It means that despite our disagreements, in spite of those disagreements that we might have or the, the way that you see something or the way that she sees or he sees something, that's okay, that's what a family is. If we can come together and unify on at least one thing, and you know what that is. That's the fact that Jesus Christ is the Lord. Church, if we can continue to move ahead into 2021 in unity surrounding the gospel of Jesus Christ, then I do feel that we are preparing ourselves for what God has in store for us. We've already said that you cannot prepare for, I'm sorry, you cannot plan a move of God, but you can prepare for one. How do you prepare? It's by making sure that we are unified around the gospel of Christ. Let's just be honest. We're not gonna unify on certain views. We're not gonna unify necessarily on political views. We're not gonna unify on this or that. And guess what? As a family, that's okay. What family unifies on everything all the time? They don't really do that. But as long as there is that central theme, the unification around the gospel of Jesus Christ, the fact that Jesus is the Son of God, that He died for us, rose again, and is returning, church, I feel like we will be able to prepare well. And so I want to issue to you and to us as a family some similar language that we did in the beginning of the year. We're going to continue to unify, but this year, we're going to prepare much better. We're going to unify around the gospel and we are going to prepare for all that God has in store for us. Because I can tell you, God has blessed us this year. We've seen so many people meet Jesus, people be baptized, families come together. We've seen addictions literally broken, marriages restored. We're now meeting in a space that God gave to us out of nowhere. We're preparing to break ground on a new facility God has completely blessed us, but here's the deal. We must continue to unify around the gospel and we must prepare for what God has in store. So I wanna ask you, if you would right now, wherever you are, with your family hopefully, would you just grab hands? Would you just grab the person's hand next to you? Maybe that means you uh, getting up from where you're sitting, going and sitting next to somebody else in your home. Grab their hand. I'm gonna ask if you would, just 
bow your heads and close your eyes. And let's pray together. Okay, would you pray with me? Let's pray. Father, Lord, we just want to thank you that even in the midst of the chaos of this last year, you have continued to bless Covenant Church. This is our family. And Lord, as a family, we come before you saying that we want to continue to unify around your gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ. We claim that we believe in Jesus. We claim that Jesus is the risen Son of God. We claim that Jesus is coming back again. May we be prepared. Father, would you prepare our hearts? Would you lead us to action, serving, loving, giving, caring, building? Protect us, Father, as a church. Protect our unity around the gospel. We will trust you with the outcome. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks for joining us. Make sure you check out the devotional that goes deeper into this topic. I can't wait to see you guys in just a couple weeks for our New Year Vision Sunday kickoff.